The NASCAR Winston Cup Series 2002 season rolls back on here to the Kansas Speedway for the Protection 1 400 as the championship battle is oh so close between Joe Gibbs Racing teammates Chris Jericho, winner at Lowe's last race, took over the points lead, 48 points up over Mathis Wells, his teammate in the number 20 car, with other cars like the Roush Racing Boys behind just in case those front two make some contact and have issues here today at Kansas. And Trey, for the second ever time we're here at Kansas, you, got, you unfortunately didn't get to race here at the Kansas Speedway in your career, but you were up in the booth for this race last season where we saw four caution flags. The groove very, very narrow. The groove has wind up just a little bit since the last time we were here, but it's still a very narrow racetrack, a very new racetrack in terms of pavement. What does that can result in here for this 2002 Kansas race? Oh, Joe, positioning is going to be everything. Uh, I mean, especially on restarts or, or this initial start, if, I mean, you got to get everything you can because once that groove ends up being what we're known you know we're, we're used to seeing it's going to get harder to uh, try to make any moves so you got to be cautious especially if you're still in the chase for this championship and last season we saw most of the wrecks happen as they went three wide into turns one and two there's just not enough room for how narrow the groove was to make three wide work some drivers were able to do it by getting themselves basically out of the groove there on the top of three wide but it normally did not work out in the race last season we'll see if the drivers have possibly calmed it down a little bit since then or if the groove has wind out enough to where they can make three wide work but Trey you mentioned the championship and the points and the drivers in that championship hunt how they can't afford to have a bad day here today at Kansas well Chris Jarek he starts in fourth place. Pretty decent starts on the outside row. However, he's up inside the top five. He should be able to find a way down in line in a pretty good position. Meanwhile, his teammate Mathis Wells who comes in second in the points that just lost the points at Lowe's. He was set to start fifth, but after qualifying, they found some issues on the car and inspection. He goes to the back of the field. He'll start in 39th today. So, Trey, if you're in the position of Mathis Wells trying to catch your teammate and, you know, reigning champion in the Winston Cup Series, if you're trying to catch him in points and now you're starting at the back of the field, what are the nerves? like for Mathis Wells, especially at a track where we had four cautions last season. Well, Joe, you want to see some aggressive driving? Make sure we have a camera on that 20 car because he's going to be trying to get every position he can to either catch up to that 18 or minimize whatever he can for these final few races. I'm sure we'll have some JR TV camera people uh, get some cameras locked in and focused on that number 20 car. We'll see how Mathis Wells can move his way through the field. He's no stranger to going to victory lane from the back of the field. He did it at Texas back in 2000 when he failed an inspection. We'll see if he can try and do it here at Kansas as he fights for that championship with his teammate Chris Jericho. Also want to talk about some of the drivers that got penalized after the Lowe's race. They were Roger in the 55 and Jamie Stewart Jr. in the 4. Remember in that final caution flag when they flew in there as cars were stopped and trying to get back going. They flew in and NASCAR deemed by looking at telemetry they never really tried to let off off the gas. Didn't try and slow down. Didn't try and avoid whatever was happening in front of them. So they gave them probation through the end of the year and they Gave them an eight-place qualifying penalty for this race here at Kansas. For, for Stanworth, that puts them all the way back in 42nd. He, have the, he didn't have the best qualifying results. For Roger Ray, one of his better qualifying efforts of the season, but he drops eight spots from that, so he goes from set to start in 15th to now 23rd. We'll see how that impacts those drivers and if they can try and move their way through the field to get some of those spots back. And watch for Roush Racing here today. All four cars starting inside the top eight. They're just on the cusp of being able to fight for the championship. Stout third in points. Burnett, Richardson, and DeLuddle are also kind of close there as well. So, Trey, for Roush Racing, we know they're very good at these one-and-a-half-mile racetracks, and they've shown speed like this earlier in the season. As of late, it's kind of been here or there, but here today at Kansas, all four cars look to have some pretty good pace. Yeah, and that's uh, that definitely not what the 18 wants to see because I can promise you that uh, – if that 18's anywhere near a Roush, a couple of Roush guys are not going to give him any room. And uh, for everyone else in the field too, they're they're a little worried about that because I mean Roush was strong at the beginning of the season. They were they were they were decent midway through the season, and uh, looks like they're starting to get strong again at the end. Kind of like what we saw last season. Roush was very dominant early on, fell off in the summer months, but then really picked it up in the final five or so races. We'll see if that trend continues here in these final four races of the Winston Cup Series season. We took a look at the Ford Fast Tracks where we get going for the green flag. Beautiful day for racing. Clear skies, blue skies all over this racetrack. 75 degrees, so a pretty, pretty decent day in terms of temperature for these fans and drivers. Four miles an hour wind in the south direction and a just over 10% chance of rain here at the Kansas Speedway. This race is 54 laps and 81 miles in length. The field window just past the midpoint, 28 to 32 laps. Last season, that those pit stops came under the caution flag. We'll see if we get some green flag running and get some green flag pit stops here this season. The track is one and a half miles in length. The uh, banking in the corners, 14 degrees. 
10.4 degrees on the straightaway on the front stretch and 5 degrees on the back stretch. The track obviously held its first race here and opened last year in 2002. This is only the second ever NASCAR Wednesday Cup Series race here at Kansas. And last season, the two championship contenders, Chris Jericho and Brett Sierra, they both finished outside the top 15 in this race. So if you're Mathis Wells and Chris Jericho, the two championship front runners this season, will they be able to break that trend and get some good finishes or will they both falter in this race and finish further back to maybe allow some of those Roush guys or RCR guys to catch back up in terms of the championship points. About time to get going though for the 29th race of the 2002 NASCAR Wednesday Cup Series season. Let's go down to track time. Fire the engines up with this starting command. Start your engines. Their roll off 42 cars to do down the Protection 1 400, the second ever NASCAR Wednesday Cup Series race here at the Kansas Speedway. And let's talk about the man who was the man of the hour at Lowe's, Chris Jericho the 18, won his second race of the season, moved into the point seat for the first time this season. Trey, in the past 12 races, he has eight top fives. His past three race finishes have been second, second, and first. Is that 18 crew just peaking at the right time can carry this moment all the way to a second straight championship? I mean, Joe, hey, it's hard to argue that these guys aren't peaking at the exact perfect time they need to. I mean, they've honestly been the one to beat the past however many weeks now. What we'll to see if they can carry it again here at Kansas? They have a good starting spot. See if they can try and get another victory here in this season. Back a few rows behind him on the inside. Matt Burnett, the 17, has still not yet won this season, but still barely in that championship fight. What does he do from seventh place here, to Trey? Uh, fight his way to the front. No, uh, no holds barred. You're, you're too late into the season. You can't be giving up any room now. I mean, every point is the point that matters, so he's got to be doing whatever he can in that car to uh, try to get something up. Going for that victory here today at Kansas. Keyshawn Richardson and Justin Zidell are the front row. The second ever NASCAR wins the Cup Series race at the Kansas Speedway is underway. Down the back straightaway, the 99 gets a launch clear in the lead from pole. Hernandez in second. He slides up the hill a little bit. Here comes Tim Guerin, that number 10, moving low for the second spot. Behind them, Kukulon trying to get by Noah Clifton as they enter into the travel. And Keyshawn Richardson leads the first lap. Last season in this race, the pole star never got to lead a lap. That was just Atkins. Here this season, Richardson leads the first lap and already Trey. Chris Jericho jumped to the inside from fourth place, and now he's back up to fourth as they exit turn two. A little bit of jostle in there right behind Jericho. But, yeah, I mean, he did exactly what he needed to do. Joe was starting on the outside, got to the inside as soon as he can. Now we'll have to see if it can take him anywhere as we're possibly looking three wide coming off a of four here. We might be still looking. Hernandez put to the outside. Zidell went to the middle. And Atkins is down low on the 30, racing the turn one. This is where most of the accidents happened last season. They're making contact in Woo. big ways. Yepes shoving all the way to the bottom of the 44. Somehow they made it work off turn number two and down the back straight away. I don't know how they made it work, though. It might have been four wide there for a second. That was, uh, everyone was taking every inch that they could. And Jericho moves by Matthew Burnett to move to third place. Burnett back to fourth. Kukulon up to fifth. They're all running down. Keyshawn Richardson in the 99. Then you have Atkins in sixth. Yeah, Pez up to seventh. Thompson, winner of this race last season, up to eighth. Battle for ninth is Laura Chung and Justin Zidell. Anthony Hernandez giving it back to Zidell in the middle of one and two. Oh. And here comes Roger right with a big runoff turn two. What a move that was. That was, uh, you think that was a little bit of payback? <laughs> I think it was. I think Hernandez was not happy with Zidell did to him, and he showed it right there. And Roger Ray took a two-for-one deal on that one and swept around the inside lane. DeLello trying to get out of the middle as Jack Carter to his inside. Zidell to his outside, dropping like a rock. There's DeLello getting clear of the 24, but not quite clear of the 21. Racing into one, he sends it in deep and gets clear of Jack Carter. Now Carter is under attack from Roger Crown Jr. Mitchell Collins as the pack scares around. Here's Hernandez going back for the top 10 on Roger Ray, racing down the back straightaway. DeLello looking low on Noah Clifton. They're three wide for the back, and just as I know, cannot get out of the outside groove. He's dropping oh, and dropping oh. and dropping. But we're good. <laughs> this is... Mathis this Wells poor is saying, get me out of this. Yeah. I mean, he's trying everything he can. He just can't get it. He's going to be in a three-wide situation again. 
Down to one, Jordan Edwards on the inside. Conrad Evans in the middle. Ooh. And Zydell is just getting bullied up the racetrack because there's nowhere for anyone to go except into his door. And Zydell is now back around 30th place. Remember, he started in second place here today. It has not been the start of the race that Zydell has wanted at all. He just can't get out of that situation as we have more three wide action back here. And gets you up top three wide again, Joe. Yeah, that 24 is still dropping back on the outside. Lathan Strickland kind of being very aggressive. That number 15, he failed inspection. Was set to start inside the top 25. Now he started way back here, and he's trying to gain these spots back as the field has kind of settled it out to mostly double file. Justin Zedell still backing up. There's Jude Martinelli making just his second start of the season. That number 67 moving on the outside is team owner Jack Haas. Moving three wide in the inside. Put Luke Rennie, the 88 in the middle. Shocking to see Luke back this far. He's been very strong as of late, but here today just not having it as he's middle of three between the Jasper cars. He's going to try and get out of that behind the 77 it looks like. Back up to the front lead change. Tim Gary is by Keyshawn Richardson. Led that last lap. And here comes the points leader. Jericho wanting those five bonus points here in lap number eight. He absolutely forced that car under the bottom side of Tim Gary. <laughs> he drove that thing in there. He wants those five points, Trey. He knows that every point matters in these championships. He knows from experience last season how big every point can be. And as he works off turn number four, he's going to lead the eighth lap of this one here, Trey. Five bonus points to the way the 18. Not with his teammate Mathis Wells. Wanted to see as well. Still trying to fight through traffic. Yeah, Wells is doing a nice job slowly getting his way up here. He got to the inside. I was making ground, but... With how spread out these guys are now, it's only going to get harder the farther he moves up. But Richardson is now moving to the inside of the 18. He might be bringing the 29 along with him. Wells currently scored back in 18th, so he's moved up very, very nicely from that 39th place starting spot. Richardson clears Jericho back. Now, as you mentioned, bringing Sebastian Kukul on the 29 to the inside with him. Remember, RCR has not won since race 6 this season. So they're looking for something, and it did not go their way at Lowe's. They had all three cars destroyed in that accident. Kuklan walked away a little sore, but just fine to continue on racing. Great to see him back behind the wheel of 29 here at Kansas, trying to get something to go RCR's way here in the second half of the season. Burnett's through to third. Kuklan's teammate just knack up to fourth, and here's Keegan Thompson. Won this race last season, didn't lead many laps. He just led late in the race. Well, here he is moving up nicely. Completion of lap 10. He's now up inside the top five for the first time today. Keegan Thompson quietly moving forward. Yeah, and uh, that's that's a man who needs something going for him here, but it's going to be hard to do when this 18 is making his way right back up the pack. He had almost contact there between the 44 and the 10. That was, uh, I don't know if you saw that one there, Joe. I did. I think our cameramen saw that too. They were trying to get back there in case the 44 spun the 10 out. They got oh so close there. Luckily though, they uh, kept it off each other and kept it going straight. Jericho back up to the top five, moving back by Keegan Thompson, bringing Lord Chung and Anthony Hernandez down to the inside. Up front for the lead. Kukulon pressure Keyshawn Richardson down to turn one. At one point this season, it looked like Ooh. it might be battle between these two for the championship. Now they're bound for the lead on lap number 12 here at Kansas. Yeah, I mean, Joe, think of how RCR started out this season, right? Didn't they win three out of the first six races or something along those lines? They won four of the first six, Trey. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> yeah. But then all of a sudden, I, I think, I mean, did it not start around Richmond? The first Richmond race, you know, where, yeah. where I think it was, what, the 31 took out the eight, which ended up taking out the points leader, which was, oh, the 31's teammate, <laughs> the 29? Yep, yep, and then that basically just started to spiral <laughs> downhill for RCR, put then... Roush Racing's Keyshawn Richardson in the hot seat in terms of the championship. And then when he faltered in the summer months, it was his teammate Zachary Del Lolo that took over. And then when he faltered, it was Mathis Wilson. And then Mathis Wilson's faltered, and now we've led to Chris Jericho be the new points there. Can, can you follow all that throughout the season? Uh, just don't be the points leader, which is weird to say. <laughs> It is weird to say. Normally that's your goal, but at the moment, it's not been the way you want to be. But right now, Chris Jericho, he's making the most of being the points. They're still running inside the top five. Ooh. Laura Chung getting aggressive in the number nine as they race off turn number two. Coming back around to 40 laps to go at the line. So far, caution free here at the Kansas Speedway, but the intensity level still just up there as Jericho gets cleared fourth. Lord Chung's up to fifth. You have Pez for sixth. Richardson back to seventh. You have Tim Gary eighth. DeLello ninth, moving by Anthony Hernandez. There's Thompson, Collins, Rando, and back here is that number 20 of Mathis Wells still moving up. He's in front of Evans. He's in front of Fitzwater. He's now just outside of the top 15 and 17th place. Mathis Wells. Quietly moving forward, trying to get up there towards his teammate and points leader, Chris Jericho, trying to minimize, as you mentioned, the points lost to him. Low and steady, Joe. That's all you need to do. I mean, as long as you're making position, that's all that really matters. And the 20 is doing a nice job right now. He doesn't really need to be pushing. I mean, yeah, there is quite a few cars between him and his teammate. But at the same time, you can't be using up your tires and, you know, costing yourself more positions than you're gaining. 
I think the big thing they need to tell him, and maybe they already have told him, is that Ooh. maybe they said, you know, the 18 got to the lead and led a lap, he got those five bonus points, but they also need to tell him, hey, the 18 got passed, he's not up there leading laps and leading laps and possibly going to get the most laps led. He's running in second right now, which is still close enough, but you don't have to get up there and try and bully your way through these guys to try and stop the 18 from leading the race. Other drivers are doing that for you. Yeah, I don't know if you're watching the 18 and Jerry Kyle, how he rides his Friends his car, but one and two, Joe, he's so aggressive. I don't know if that's going to possibly cost him here later in the run or not, but, I mean, there's just times where he absolutely uses everything he has in that car to get underneath someone. He's a... Uh he is being very aggressive for me in the points there today. I'm kind of shocked by it. I thought, you know, maybe he'd be that aggressive if Mathis Wells was up there with him. Well, when Wells failed inspection, I said, the 18's going to just take it calm, ride around, you know, 6th, 7th place, wherever he falls in line and gets down to the inside. He'll just kind of ride there inside the top 10, top 15 and be all right with it. But here today, Trey, he is, he is maybe the most aggressive driver at the front of the field. Yeah, it's uh, very strange, but we'll have to see if it ends up working out for him so far. I mean, he's catching... He's catching our leader. He gained, I think it was almost two tenths last time around. So, I mean, you can visibly see him catching to the back of, you know, Kugelon in the 29. But again, is it going to hurt him on this long run? Because, I mean, with how spread out these guys are, I don't know if we're going to end up getting a caution before pit stops or not. It's kind of interesting that last season we saw those four caution flags so far today. It's looking like it could go caution free up to green flag pit stops as Kukulon that lead is shrinking and shrinking with every passing moment Chris Jericho the point shooter getting right up onto the back of Kukulon he's bringing Delia Pez for Petty Enterprise with him a great run so far for that number 44 car showing muscle here today at Kansas and had a good run at Lowe's last race just Atkins Kukulon's teammate is up here Keisha Richardson trying to get back to the front the pole sitter then Tim Gary is in six he's a good ways back DeLello is seventh Hernandez is eighth Collins is ninth Brando is tenth and Matt as well is still here making moves moving by Roger Ray he's inside the top 15 now going for 14th on Roger Ray down into turn 22 and Conrad Evans moving up nicely he kind of fell back there at the start but the third one moving back up just outside the top 10 now and Mathis Wells just following his way through it's uh it's it's, it's nice to have a calm race for once Joe it is especially after what we saw at Lowe's where uh we had less than uh half the field finish the race on the racetrack it'd be nice to see all 42 cars finish the race on the racetrack here today I don't even want to think about the last race. Oh! Yeah. Oh, yeah, I thought he was going to make a move. <laughs> yeah, he looked to make that move, but couldn't make it stick. Jericho looking for a move on Kukulon off turn number two. And Trey mentioned he didn't want to talk about last week's race at Lowe's. Uh, but maybe we should get our advanced health arch push of the week out of the way. Oh, early uh, one like this time. I like it. Yeah, an early one right before we get to green flag pit stops. Uh, last week at Lowe's, we had asked which of the final four tracks will have the biggest impact on the championship. And the consensus, all tracks got votes as Yepes goes for a second again in turn 22. All tracks got a percentage of the vote, but the biggest percentage was Atlanta at 40%. So people think the finale of the biggest impact on the championship in this season. I forget what I said. Was it Atlanta? You said Atlanta and, well, you said Kansas, and then your second vote was Atlanta. All right, so technically I was right. Anyways, what's, <laughs> um, well, what's, what's this one, Joe? What's the next right, one? So... This week here at Kansas, it deals as we go three wide. And oh, hold, hold off on a little one bit sec. Here. The points there is on the outside, but everyone given room. That was a very, very courteous move by everyone there to give each other room. Jericho just kind of <laughs> dropped out, but he'll drop back a few positions, but it's a lot better than a wrecked up race car. Uh, this week, speaking of wrecked up race cars, at Lowe's last week, we had 17 of the 42 car start finish on the racetrack. So, Trey... Was it embarrassing for NASCAR that less than half of the field ended up running at the end of the race on the racetrack? Oh, 100%. It's embarrassing for NASCAR, for the teams, and hell, I didn't even say for the drivers. I mean, what? I, I thought we came to watch, you know, racing, not a demolition derby. It, it seems like every time we go to that track, these drivers just completely forget how to drive. Right. It's so weird because here, like, there's only about two grooves that are running, and they've done it perfectly fine so far here today. I don't undo. Uh, Joe, I don't. I mean, that first wreck literally took out how many total teams? Probably five <laughs> or six, and that's half the field in itself, right? I, well, how about this, Trey? As we, we were talking about that, Diglia Pez just moved his Petty Enterprises number 44 Dodge out into the wind. He's the new race leader. He just passed an RCR car, smashed Kukulon, and we're not that far from Green Flag Pit Stops. The 44 could enter in the race lead. This is uh, this is some kind of a show from this guy, isn't it? It is. Diglia Pez trying to uh, 
to try to put that 44 on top in the 2002 season. Remember last season, Petty Enterprise got the victory in the with Berta Crown Jr. in that wacky circumstance in Lowe's. But here today, Yepes <laughs> has shown the speed to maybe get there himself and get it based on, on merit, not necessarily on some pitch strategy call. Yeah, that is a uh, th th that would be some. Joe, what? Back to the question, real quick. What do you think? How do you feel? You've been in this commentating business a while. What have you ever seen any race like that? I've never seen a race like that. I would say personally, I'd say it's a little bit more embarrassing for the drivers than it is for NASCAR. Yeah, I mean, I, I got like I said, it's the teams and the drivers. I feel are the ones that are really affected by that. I mean, money-wise for the teams, right? That was millions of dollars worth of damages. I mean, that was crazy. But then the drivers, I mean, it pretty much, not to say it, like, tainted what they what they look like as professionals, but it, it definitely didn't help it. And remember, earlier this season when we went to Lowe's, we had one caution flag, and it wasn't for incident. It was for debris. Uh, I don't know, Joe. It's I, I guess the drivers were just not as caring with each other this time around, but it was definitely not a good look. Well, uh, we've passed the halfway point. Yepes leads. The pit window is open to make it to the end. Remember, the field window, 28 to 32 laps. We'll see if anyone tries an undercut here. We obviously don't know what an undercut could do at Kansas because we've never had green flag pit stops here at the Kansas Speedway in the NASCAR World Cup Series because last season we had so many cautions. They just did under the caution flag and got out of the way. Yepes pulling away as they battle for second place. So far, no one making the move onto pit road of the front half of the field. We've now completed 28 laps. Yepes pulling away as they battle for second place. Richardson moves to second, Atkins to third, Kukulon about for fourth with the championship points there, Chris Jericho. And as they run Mathis Wells, Jericho's teammate and nearest championship competitor is running in the top 12 as now cars are starting to come down the pit lane. It looks like Yepes for the lead will yield with Richardson and a lot of others. Jericho is going to try and overcut with Gary and Hernandez. And Mathis Wells is staying out there, but about five cars so far making the move on to pit road. Here comes some more, so we'll see if the undercut works or if the overcut works better. Yeah, I'll be curious to see. I'm uh, I, I I like the plan by Wells to stay out with his teammate and and championship you know opponent. I guess you could say, but uh, we'll, we'll have to see. Like you said, how this undercut works, and we'll have to see if these guys come in this time around or if anyone's gonna stay out. Looks like Wells might be staying out. Looks like he's staying out with Mitchell Collins and Laura Chung. So as Jericho yields the pit road, we're going to have some drivers do a very lengthy overcut. Collins, Wells, and Laura Chung have stayed out on the racetrack. Chung's teammate Nolan Lawrence, Roger Ray as well. If Mathis Wells, uh, he's not going to be able to lead the lap though because his pit stall is so soon. I was going to say if he can try and pass the 12 before they pit, maybe he can try and lead the lap on pit road. However, his pit stall is so soon because of where he qualified. Yeah, I was going to say, I wonder if he was begging on the 12 to pit in and everyone else in front of him just so he can get a lap led, but looks like he won't be able to do it. So he's just going to come down pit road here. A little bit of an overcut, I guess you could say. We'll have to see uh, how, how big of a difference. He came in what, 12th? He came in 12th, so we'll have to see where he comes out. And The good thing for him is that his pit stall is so soon that he's not going to run into any congestion on pit road. Is at the front, Yepes cycled out. Now we have Keyshawn Richardson and Smash Kukon. They're bound for second place. The 44 is a good width ahead of these guys as they race side by side through one and two. There's Chris Jericho getting up to speed. There's Yepes already gone. The 44 is a massive gap off pit road. I didn't see what they did on pit road. Oh. Oh, look out. Richardson, oh, Richardson. tried to shoot the middle, but Jericho said, nah, not so fast. I have this inside lane. You can't force me off the racetrack onto the apron. Oh, my Lord. That was a close call, but they made it all work. But, uh, yeah, Joe, that 44 is gone. <laughs> yeah, Lord Chung let that last lap on pit road. There's Mathis Wells coming off with Mitchell Collins. Remember, they did the overcut. As Jericho lets some guys go, Wells still getting up to speed. We'll have to see where he comes out. Remember, he entered in 12th. There's Aaron Cerrito who did a very, very aggressive undercut and gained a lot of track Ooh. position. Roberto Crown Jr. going to get halted by the 20. Wells trying to protect for everything, but Roberto Crown Jr. now shoot to the inside of the 43. Here comes the 31 of Evans as well. So Mathis Wells, Trey, it looks like he's going to cycle out better than where he came in. Which is very good for him. Now he's got to hope to get to this inside and start trying to make up some sort of ground on the guys in front of him here because this is a big group. He's going to lose quite a bit of spots. So, Joe, honestly, if he loses this entire inside line, he's going to be about the same place. Yeah, yeah, he's going to be about where he came in. And he's got fresher tires. So I think at, at overall it was a very, very big win. A few cars behind him is another guy who started at the back, Leighton Strickland, having a good run up inside the top 15 from the back of the field. 
Riley Sproju didn't have the best of qualifying results here. He is moving up. There's the 66 of Orman running nicely inside the top 20 as well. So a big shuffle of the field. But at the front of the field, back around to 20 Whoa. to go next time. Bias Chung gets tight. Burnett has to check up. Diego Yapez has a two-second gap over second place Keyshawn Richardson and third place Justin Atkins. It makes you wonder what that 44 team did on pit road. I wonder if they did some sort of strategy or what, because that is a huge gap. Yes, it is, but if these guys keep out for second place, they're not going to be able to run them down as fast as they need to as Richardson moves to second by Atkins. Kukulai moves to third by Atkins. Here comes the 18 of Chris Jericho looking for fourth place. His teammate and nearest championship rival, Mathis Wells, is battling up inside the top 12 with a great pitch strategy call to move his way up to down 12th place, but with fresher tires than the guys around him. He has Fitzwater and Randall for the top 10. Evans, Roberto Crown Jr., and Mitchell Collins are just up the road as well, so Wells realistically could get a top seven finish here today if all goes his way. Yeah, and I mean, if Jericho ends up finishing at the back of the pack that he's running in right now, it's only a two-spot difference between the two, which, I mean, Jericho would still gain points, especially since he has a lap lead, but it's definitely not as bad as it was considering that Wells started in the back. Yeah, Wells started 39th, Jericho started 4th, and so far there's only about eight positions between them on the racetrack. Richardson and the rest of the guys are running that 44 down, tenths a lap, that time by three tenths gained as they've gotten single foul strung out. That 44 does not have the speed by himself in the 99 and the 29, the 18, they are making them pay for. But we also saw, Trey, the 44 was really good on worn tires towards the end of the run. That's when he started to come alive. So possibly that's what's happening here is that the 44, he's on fresher tires and these guys are on fresher tires. They're a lot better on the shorter run. The 44 is a lot better in the longer run, possibly. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, if we're being honest, the 44 is getting chased down by Roush, RCR, <laughs> JGR, the top three teams in the series right now. So it's not like the 44 is trying, like not trying to stay out front. It's just, you know, he, he in all honesty, he just doesn't have the power to be with them. But if he can get within that draft, Joe, he'll be staying right there. But Joe, look who's peeking in for a top 10 here. Mathis Wells to 11th, got by Jay Reynolds, looking on Fitzwater for 10th, but didn't have the run to make it work. Now he's going to back up the corner, try and get the run off of four to make a move into turn number one. Mathis Wells, he sees sixth place Tim Gary up the road. He knows that could be a position he can realistically get to. As he looks on Fitzwater, just like his teammate Jericho's been doing all day today, Wells is doing the same with his Joe Gibbs Racing Pontiac, moving to 10th place on Fitzwater down the back straightaway. I think a spotter or crew chief might have told him a little hint like, hey, you, your teammate's uh, riding up front. He's been really aggressive in one and two. You might as well give it a try. Yeah, your teammate can do this. He can hold the bomb, that white line of turns one and two and make it work. You can do the same thing. Battle for sixth place. Collins trying to get by Tim Gary. The Penske cars did not qualify well at all yesterday. They were so, so slow off the pace. And uh, it's great to see both of them have run through the field and they're both inside the top 12 currently as we run. They've caught Yepes now. Kukulon looked for a pass on Richardson, couldn't make it work. Richardson looks for a pass on Yepes as they work through three and four. Looking lower, looking for a run. The 99 trying to get one into the travel. Now looks at the inside. Yepes blocks it off with 14 laps to go. Uh, this 44 is going to block with everything, but that's not going to help. Oh, oh three Kukulon's going to shove it three wide. Richardson in the middle. He gets clear of Yepes. Now the 29 fighting hard in the bomb, trying to stay there. They race side by side for the lead. Down the back straightaway into turns three and four. Sebastian Kukulon trying to take away, bringing Jericho and Atkins to the inside lane with them. This might get a little dicey here, Joe. It might. We have, <laughs> I, I don't mean, know we if have, I'm liking the way it's looking. <laughs> and back there and forth, Justin Atkins trying to get redemption from last season in this race where he started on pole but never got to lead a lap in the race. Kukulon's team move forward. Richardson got loose in front of the 30. They check up. They're going three wide for third. The front two get away. Yeah, it's definitely not what the 30 and 44 wanted to see there, but not much Richardson could have done. I mean, like you said, he just kind of got a little loose. Good save by him, but... These three are going to fall a little farther back here. Now it's going to be a two-horse race, but I wouldn't be surprised to see those three catch back up. I wouldn't because I think Chris Jericho might look for a pass on Sebastian Kukulon. Atkins for a pass on Yepes down into turn number one. Jericho again looking for the bottom of one and two. He gets down there but gets a little tight on exit. Sebastian Kukulon gaps him by about a car length down the back straightaway. A quick update on some drivers that started well in this race but have not raced well. 
just as Idell from the outside pole has fallen all the way down to 39th. That was a car that was fastest in practice, second fastest in qualifying. He's dropped down to 39th. And Noah Clifton started inside the top 10. He's down in 40th place in that number 32 car. Kind of surprising there to see how those guys. Yeah, it's uh, very strange to see that 24 drop so far, but we'll, we'll have to uh, possibly get a, get a talk with him later after this Ooh. race. And see what happened there, Joe. I thought that 15 was about to clobber the left side of that 31. That got close. Riley Spurgeon shoving to the inside. All these drivers fighting for every position. This is for the top 10. These guys are going crazy. At the front of all this is Mathis Wells. He's gotten away in 7th place. Mitchell Collins has gotten away in 6th place to make it 6 cars under a blanket for the lead. And if these front few keep battling, Mathis Wells could close in with 10 to go. There's still enough time if these guys keep slowing each other down. Mathis Wells could gain more spots. Let's see if the 30 can get a run on the 18 here. If the 18 can't close any further in on the 29, he's looking low, looking low. He's going to force himself to the bottom line, Joe. DeLello passing Wells back there. Mitchell Collins passing Giglia Pez. That 44 has fallen off. Led so many laps at that midpoint, but so far that car just does not have it in the second run of the race. Collins to fifth with now nine laps of racing to go. The front four, RCR, Joe Gibbs Racing, RCR, and Roush Racing. That... Th that's the contenders right now at the front of the field, but watch for Mitchell Collins from Penske Racing up into the top five now, moving by Yepes, and back there, watch for DeLello and Mathis Wells if they can try and close in as Richardson looked on Atkins but didn't have to run. Eight laps to go at the line. Because the sales watching the start finish, and DeLello got past that 20 there, but I still wouldn't count them out yet. They're two fast cars as we couple of, uh, oh, a couple more moves are getting made. Look for the pass of Roberto Crown Jr., but the 43 stays in line in front. Wells might be better off just pushing this 97 at the moment, trying to get away from the cars behind, trying to catch the cars in front, and then at the end, when you're kind of sorted out and you know where you're going to be, start battling the 97 then rather than battle them now and maybe lose uh, lose a chance to gain on these front five because Mitchell Collins, he was back there with Mathis Wells, but now he's up here at the front pack, so Wells knows he can run these guys down if all oh, the opportunities that. arise. <laughs> wow! Wow, they did that at the same exact time. I don't, know if, that, I don't know if that was planned and synchronized or if that was just dumb luck that that happened. I don't know. That was very cool looking, though. <laughs> it was. I, I was impressed, but that's going to put Jericho now possibly back to fifth because here comes Mitchell Collins. He'll move to fourth place. Jericho is fading back as Kukulon is being run down by his teammate, Justin Atkins, and Mathis Wells can see his teammate and points leader, Chris Jericho, not too far up the road with less than 10 laps to go. We have seven, excuse me, six laps to go here at Kansas Speedway. Still about five cars for the race victory. It's Sebastian Kukulon and Justin Atkins trying to get RCR their first victory since race number six earlier this season. Keyshawn Richardson looking for his sixth victory of the season. And Mitchell Collins trying for his second and Penske's second victory of the season as they work their way around to five laps to go. The battle for the lead is on. Justin Atkins looking for his first ever win to the inside. Smash Kukulon down into turn one. How many times has this man been in contention to get a win? Too many times to not get one. Maybe today's finally the day. He leads off turn number two. Richardson through to second in the 99 car. It looks like there's a decent gap. Uh, I don't know if the 18's slowing down or if he's just kind of pacing himself right now. It might, looks like he kind of threw it into that one right there. Might be trying to get to the inside of the 29, and he might have it here coming off the floor. He needs to because, Not I mean, that, quite. that 20 and the 97, they are flying. Look at they're getting on the 44, and then the next stop would be these front five with four laps to go. Don't know if they have the time, but definitely Wells is worrying Jericho because Jericho's not going to gain as, as much as he thought he would at the beginning of the day. There's Jericho making move on the 29, but that's just going to make them fall back. It is. <laughs> Look at the gap. Here goes DeLello trying to pass Yepes, but the 44 stays in front as they work through three and four. Mitchell Collins has come from the back of the field. He is absolutely flying on the second round of the race, looking low on Keyshawn Richardson. Back around to now three laps to go. Atkins out in front clear. Richardson clear in second. Collins in third. And there's DeLello going for sixth on Yepes into turn one. He'll bring Mathis Wells Ooh. right down to the bottom with them. That uh, 20, uh, 44, I think, might got a little bit loose there. Looks like he had to check up. That brought the 20 to the inside of him oh. as these guys battle again. Look how close, Joe. And here comes DeLello. He's, he's possibly in that draft now because they're side by side. It's a three-car race at the front coming back to two to go. Here's DeLello gaining on Jericho. If he gets to the inside, Mathis Wells can pass him and possibly gain points on the 18 today. I don't know about the race for the lead, but this race right here is really making me excited. <laughs> now, let's see. There's, there's both the races, Trey. How about that? Oh, Joe, look, the teammates are right next to each other. The 20 the on the big the track. Mathis He's Wells there. to the inside, trying to limit the damage loss. 
Remember, Jericho's getting five bonus points for leading a lap, but Mathis Wells is going to gain points on him because he's passed around the racetrack, back around to the white flight, the 20s in front of the 18. Who would have seen that coming at the front? Just Nekins looking for his first ever win, takes the white flag with the lead. He's just going to go one more time around here, but this 99, oh, might be getting passed by the 12, but not quite this time, as long as the 99 doesn't get some sort of push. Going on to the back, Joe, the 30 might have a big enough gap, but I wouldn't count anything out. Keyshawn Richards and Mitchell Collins looking for a run. They race down the back straightaway for the final time here at the Kansas Speedway. Justin Atkins out in front. Richardson sends it in. Closes to within a car length. But it's not going to be enough. They race off turn number four for the first time ever. It'll be a NASCAR Winston Cup Series victory for Justin Atkins at the Kansas Speedway. Oh, the 20. Oh, the 18 lost two spots. The 20 beat the 29. He's, he's beat. He's, he's <laughs> outputted Chris Jericho here today. Joe, the amount of storylines coming out of this race is insane. Yeah, so how about Justin Atkins getting a first ever victory? And how about Mathis Wells coming from 39th to outpoint his teammate Chris Jericho to start fourth in this race? Trey, this was this was uh, the race <laughs> of the season, possibly. I I I, I don't even know. Um, I mean, I think Green Flag Kansas is a lot better than Caution Field <laughs> Kansas. Joe, that was insane. What a drive by let alone the 30 who's been like we've said, itching for a win for oh so long. He's had so many chances throughout this season to get it done and just hasn't had the luck. He finally does it here. And for the 20, Mathis Wells to drive from 39th all the way up to, where did he finish? Sixth? Fifth? I think he finished six, fifth, it might have been. Was it? That's crazy. I mean, he had the fast, probably arguably one of the fastest cars at the end of this thing. He did. He and Delello were zooming through the field. If there were five more laps, I would have hated to be the front three because <laughs> the 97 and the 20 were hauling through the through the the, uh, the pack. But want to give a shout though to Justin Atkins for winning this race for the last however many races. I feel like it's been seven to eight races. I've looked at the points and looked at the points after every race, and he's been stuck at four top fives, nine top tens. He found a way to get anywhere from like 11th to 15th, but he couldn't get a top 10, couldn't get a top five, and now he finally gets one. He's up to now five top fives and 10 top tens with his first ever NASCAR Wednesday Cup Series victory. What thrilling fashion for Justin Atkins to get that first ever victory here today at the Kansas Speedway. Second place to Keyshawn Richardson. Very, very solid effort there in terms of the points. He's going to gain points on the front two in the championship, but they also did very well to limit any points lost to the drivers behind them as well. Mitchell Collins came from the back of the field to finish in third place here today. Very, very impressive drive for that number 12. Zachary Delella was out of the lead draft for most of the race, but battles back to finish in fourth if there were, as mentioned, five more laps. He possibly has the one standing in victory lane. And Mathis Wells from 39th place gets a top five here today at the Kansas Speedway. He now gains slight points on his teammate Chris Jericho here today. Kukulon ends up in sixth. There's Jericho where he finished in seventh place. Yepes, who had the dominant card at the midpoint, falls back. Still a very solid eighth place result. They knew Yepes was there for Petty Enterprises here today. Riley Sprogen with a solid ninth place trying to get himself back towards the championship fight. And Lathan Strickland came from the back of the field just like Mathis Wells. He notches off a top ten. Another petty car, Roberto Crown Jr. ends up in 11th. Fitzwater Collins' teammate ends up in 12th. Then they have Matthew Burnett down here. He kind of dropped there towards the end. No Nolan Lords with a solid day. Tim Gary down there in 15th. Laura Chung with a solid day as well in 16th. Jay Brando, Conrad Evans dropped there. Keegan Thompson had dropped. Eli Bright about where he started in 20th place. There's Matt Tuck. Didn't make much noise. Jordan Stout, not the day he was looking for. Entered third in the points, but he's going to lose a lot of points with a mid-pack finish. Enters some Rita solid run. Hernandez dropped down the number one car. We look down here and Roger Ray dropped from his starting spot where he was running most of the race. There's Luke Rennie. He never had the car here today under him to have a good result. And we look down. Justin Zidell ends up in 38th. Noah Clifton in 40th. And then Nathan Stilton and Jack Haas. Last cars running in 41st and 42nd here today at the Kansas Speedway. And Trey, with now three races left, we look at the points. Still a two-man race for that championship between Chris Jericho and Mathis Wells. But Mathis Wells did such a good job not losing any points. Gained slight points on the teammate Chris Jericho here today at the Kansas Speedway. That could go a long way in terms of bound for that championship come Atlanta. Oh, Joe, this thing's <laughs> its just going to get closer and closer. We're going to have three seasons in a row where I'm going to say Atlanta is going to be the deciding factor. Right, that would be uh, great to see, and possibly this season it comes between teammates Chris Jericho and Matt Sosa or Joe Gibbs Racing as both 
uh, edge out top tens here today at the Kansas Speedway. But all eyes are on Justin Atkins, who goes to victory lane here today for the first ever time in his NASCAR Wednesday Cup Series career and gets RCR their first victory since race number six of the season. And who knows what might happen at the next race as we go back to North Carolina, just like we were at Lowe's, for the second Rockingham race of the season is the Pop Secret Microwave Popcorn 400. Last season, Roush Racing got a 1-2-3 on that race. Earlier this season, it was another Roush car winning Keyshawn Richardson after some pit strategy arose with a late caution flag. Some drivers came in and pitted and got the fresh tires. That ended up winning the race. So, Trey, if it's anything like those last two uh, Rockingham races we saw, we're in for one real tweet or treat in terms of how the championship battle might unfold. Uh, Joe, I... Uh... I'm, I'm excited to go there and I'm going to be itching to uh, hopefully the week goes by pretty fast because I want to see how this thing starts to unravel itself. I do too. Math as well as you have to think leaves with some momentum. After losing a lot of momentum at Lowe's, he gained a lot of it back here at Kansas coming from the back of the field to beat Chris Jericho on the racetrack. But once again, the day is for Justin Atkins. His second season, his first victory in the NASCAR Red Stick Cup Series comes here in the Pre Protection 1 400 at the Kansas Speedway. Tune into JRTV next week for the Rockingham Race, the third to last event of the 2002 NASCAR Red Stick Cup Series season as the championship draws closer between teammates Mathis Wells and Chris Jericho here in the 2002 season.